Hello everyone, and today we'll be doing another past paper question for the ACCA management accounting exam. The question we're going to do today is from section B of the extra multiple choice questions that are available on the ACCA website. More specifically, it's a management accounting extra MTQ. So if you Google management accounting extra MTQ for ACCF2, you'll get these questions. These are separate from the specimen paper from June 2014 and are an extra set of section B questions. There are three sets. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the first set, which is question one for section B uh, for this exam. And the topic of this uh, set is, as you can see, ROI, residual income, and basically your financial, non-financial performance analysis. So without any further ado, let's get into the question. So it says the background is the director of Donnie Co is reviewing the performance of one of its divisions. The following information is available for the year ending 31st March 2019 for its South division. They've given us the sales revenue, the operating profit and capital employed. And it says South division operates in the food retail industry. The total food retail industry sales for the year ended 31st March 2009 were uh, 1,250,000. So the first task for six marks is calculate the following performance measures for South Division. Start with the return on investment to the nearest whole number. And as you can see, they put a percentage sign here, meaning that we need to put our numbers as a percentage. So if we get 0.24, we're not going to put in 0.24, we're going to put in 24 because that's 24%. So return on investment, what's the formula? As we know from our videos, it's simply the operating profit divided by the capital investment or capital employed, which is given here. So 700 or over 3,500, which is effectively 20%, but let's just do that on our calculator. So we have 700 divided by 3,500 to get 0 0.2, which is 20%. So like we said, 0.2, 20%. And the good thing about the, the online specimen exams on ACC's website is that the moment you get the answer, put in an answer, it'll mark it. So we, you can see we got one out of six marks. So the, our answer was correct. If we had input an incorrect answer, like let's say 25, it wouldn't have increased our marks. Okay, so that's a way to immediately check whether or not your answer is correct. After that, it says return on sales, which is also basically our operating profit margin to one decimal place. Now we need to be careful here. Operating profit margin has traditionally been, uh, the net profit margin has traditionally also been uh, calculated using the same formula as the operating profit margin in the ACC exam. But when they want the operating profit margin itself, then they usually say return on sales, which is simply our operating profit over our sales revenue. So 700 over 50,000. So let's take out our calculator again. 700 divided by 50,000 gives us 0.014 or 1.4%. The answer tells us to one decimal place. Again, it's a percentage. So we'll just put in 1.4%. And you can see we got two marks. And please be careful, if it had said till two decimal places, then you needed to put in 1.40%. Even if 1.4 and 1.40 is the same, the, if they wanted to two decimal places, please remember to include that extra zero, otherwise it won't be marked correctly. Then we have our asset turnover. Asset turnover, like we said, any turnover ratio, whatever comes before turnover is in the denominator. So. Asset turnover is revenue or sales revenue over the total assets. However, if total assets are not given, we can use capital employed instead. So in this case, asset turnover would be our revenue of 50,000 over capital employed of 3,500. Once again, to the nearest whole number. So 50,000 divided by 3,500, which we get 14.2857. Now it says to the nearest whole number, Whole, so we'll round it and in this case it'll be rounded down to 14 and you can see as it says times because remember asset turnover is not given in percentage it is given as times so we get our mark for asset turnover as well and if you recall ROI is effectively your return on capital employed 
return on sales is your operating profit margin and we have our asset turnover okay so next we have our residual income uh, and it's given us the imputed interest charge of 12 percent per annum so that's the cost of capital effectively so residual income what was the formula it was our operating profit minus the imputed interest charge the cost of capital into our capital employed so if we take out our calculator, capital employed is 3,500 into 12 percent, 0.12 gives us 420. We deduct this from uh, 700, which is our operating profit. So we end up with 280. Now it was to be expected that the residual income would be positive. Why? Because the cost of capital 12 percent is less than the ROI of 20 percent. Right? If the cost of capital is less than the ROI, residual income will be positive. If it's equal to ROI, residual income will be zero. And if it's more than ROI, residual income will be negative, just for recap purposes. Finally, we have our market share to the nearest whole number. Market share is always calculated by taking your total sales revenue and dividing it by the revenue of the industry as a whole. And if you recall, they've given us the full revenue for the industry at 1.25 million, whereas South Division has a revenue of 50,000. So we once again take out our calculator, 50,000 divided by 1.25 million. So we get 4%, so four. And as you can see, we got all six marks, so we can move on. After that, we have task number two, which is a smaller MCQ, uh, and it has check boxes. In each of the following, an advantage of residual income as a measure of divisional performance over return on investment. So we need to be careful with the wording here. Which of these is an advantage of residual income as a measure of divisional performance over the return on investment? Because some advantages are shared by both the return on investment and residual income. So they're not applicable. We need to specifically look at what is the benefit of using the residual income over the return on investment, right? It is directly related to the net present value. Yes, it is in the sense that the net present value measures how much value is being added by a project or an investment in absolute terms. And the residual income also gives us an answer in absolute terms. It's not exactly the same because the net, net present value considers time value of money and the like, and it goes in a bit more detail. It deals with cash flows, whereas residual income deals with profits, but still both give an absolute measure uh, at the end of the day. So this would be yes. Okay. It then says it makes divisional managers aware of the cost of financing their divisions. So yes, the residual income does make divisional managers aware of the cost of financing their divisions uh, because you're using the imputed charge of cost of capital when performing the calculation. Now someone might say, but won't the cost of capital be compared to the ROI as well? Yes, it would be, but for that you need to find the cost of capital separately in order to compare the ROI. Whereas in residual income, it's necessary that you have the cost of capital to perform the calculation. Whereas ROI, if you just perform the ROI calculation on its own, you can do that even without the cost of capital, okay? It helps in comparing the performance of managers of divisions of different sizes, no. Percentage measures, relative measures like ROI help in comparing different scales of operations, but absolute measures like the NPV or residual income do not help. Think of it this way. Google will always have a residual income more than a startup company, a startup software company. Why? Because it's much larger, has a much larger scale of operations. Doesn't necessarily mean it's more efficient in making profits, but it will be making more absolute profits, right? So therefore, a residual income or any absolute metric is not good for comparison of different sizes. It ensures that the managers will select projects with positive net present values. Uh, no, not necessarily, because like we said, net present value uses cash flows, whereas residual income uses profits. So this is not necessarily the case. You would expect it to, but not always, okay? So that's fine, we got our marks here. Let's move on to the last one. Task number three, which two of the following non-financial indicators can be used to measure performance? So the hint is non-financial indicators. We can already see profit is a financial indicator, so that's not the answer. Defects per product per month, that's an operational 
related metric it doesn't have anything to do with finance so yep this is fine uh, non-productive hours per month remember two options right so non-productive hours per month again yep non-financial we'll take that return per machine per month no again return profit sales all of these are related to financial performance so these are financial indicators for non-financial just eliminate anything to do with cost revenue profit return and so on and you'll be good to go okay so that's our first question done and we'll cover the other questions in separate videos so i hope this benefited you guys and i'll see you guys next time